Hey, what's up, everybody? So, uh, here to give you some um, some Q and A, some live Q and A here. So, I took some questions in uh, my two Facebook groups. Um, got three of them today, so I'm gonna answer those. And these might take a, a little bit to answer. Um, so, just like normal, um, if you have questions, um, ask me, and I will answer them live here. Um, and if I run out of time or get too many or uh, you see it later and then comment, I'll answer it later. So um, let's get right to this. All right. So Joel asked me, um, what are your favorite joint mobility drills uh, slash stretching for shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles? All right. So um, this is probably going to be an unpopular answer with a lot of people. Um, I don't do much of any uh, mobility uh, drills or anything like that. And the reason, um, <clears throat> so I do a lot of like, I, I'm training to power lift, but I'm just now like kind of getting into it. But I've been doing like the, you know, the big lift, squat, deadlift, press, overhead, uh, overhead press, bench press, things like that uh, for a good while now. Uh, but I really try to shoot for like proper range of motion. So, you know, proper depth in the squat, um, shrugging out at the top of the um, overhead press, things like that. And that's most of the mobility uh, type work I do. Um, and that has been sufficient for me. So like I used to not be able to squat um, to depth and the way that I got to be able to squat to depth is just try a lot harder to squat to depth. Uh, I did things like, um, you know, box squats where I put the, the box um, or some, for me, it was like a bucket, uh, a kind of a, like something at the right depth I wanted to hit. So as soon as I would touch that, I'd come back up. Um, for me, it was more of a, a lot of times when people think they have mobility issues, it's more of a mental thing um, or they legitimately have mobility issues, um, but they can improve their mobility on their workouts, uh, on their particular exercises by just doing things to get themselves to where they can reach the proper mobility, um, go through the whole range of motion of whatever the exercise is. Um, so that's what I typically will recommend. Um, that being said, I do um, actually do a few mobility workouts, mostly because they just kind of like make me feel good. Um, so like I'll do the, I can't think of the name of them right now, but the shoulder thing where I'll grab the, uh, I'll grab like a broomstick or whatever and take it like arms all the way straight. Um, over, I'm not going to show you all my pit stains right now. I'm sweating mess hot. So go back uh, and front. So like, I'll, who cares? So I'll go all the way back um, and then come back up. I can't remember. Why can I not remember the name of those? I've had them called by a few different names, but I use those. Um, I do a little bit of foam rolling because it feels good. Um, I'll do a squat stretch every now and then where I grab the wall and then like get down into the squat position to proper depth. Um, so here and there, um, I'll do a few mobility things, but they're not part of my regular routine. Um, I just uh, typically don't do a ton of uh, mobility stuff and I don't typically have my clients that I work with do a lot of mobility stuff either. Um, just because, I mean, I like to keep things as simple as possible, you know? And so if somebody's already struggling to get to the gym or struggling to do whatever, I like to just hey, say like, let's do these exercises. Okay, you're struggling to get to depth on squat. You're struggling to do whatever it is with the, whatever the exercise is. I focus on that exercise and cueing them and giving them things to focus on with that. Um, so if you've got something, Joel, that's more particular, you know, you've got a more specific situation um, that you have anything uh, you wanna talk about or, or reasons that you would want help with mobility stuff, message me your comment and I'll go into more detail, but that's my kind of more broad answer on it. Love you too, Dre. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's see. TJ said, uh, I find that when I do bench presses on chest day, I get a bad pain in my left shoulder, uh, in the long head of the biceps tendon. If I try to pinpoint the general area, what stretches, stretches is the common thing today. Mobility stretches. What stretches can I do before chest presses, um, that would help alleviate this? Or is it possibly from pushing myself too hard when my muscles reach failure? Um, I would, I would probably say the latter, uh, TJ, because, okay. So, um, one other thing I'll touch on with stretches here. Um, so like most people, when they're stretching, they're doing a couple of different things. Uh, they're trying to loosen themselves up. You know, they're trying to, um, lengthen their muscles. They're trying to increase their range of motion, things like that. Um, you don't really need to do that most of the time you definitely don't want to do that before your workout so like he said here um what stretches can i do before chest presses would help alleviate this that's typically a bad idea the reason for that is um if you go into a bench press or 
chest press. I'm not sure if you're talking about bench press or like the, the machine chest press. Uh, but if you're doing, a, if you're going into, especially a free weighted movement, but if you're going into an exercise where you're going to be pushing weight, you want your muscles to be tight. And what stretching does is kind of loosen them up. So you actually, um, you know, there have been some studies done. It's not, it's, it's actually less safe to stretch before your workouts because you're loosening up the muscles that you want to be tight uh, when you do the exercises. So I would suggest um, <clears throat> not doing any stretches before it. If you're going to do stretches, do them afterward. Um, you know, stretches, I, I, I personally have the, am of the opinion that if you like them, if you enjoy doing it, if it helps you feel better, if you seem to get benefits from it, do it. Um, but for the most part, there's not a ton of like, not a ton of benefits from that. I mean, you can't lengthen your tendons. You can't lengthen your, your ligaments. You can uh, kind of elongate your muscles um, by stretching them out. But if you're going through the proper range of movement, uh, range of motion on your exercises, you're going to stretch them to the point that they need to be stretched anyway. So that's kind of the way I would answer that. Um, stretches before, I would not do that um, to answer. It. So what I would kind of diagnose it as and guess it, <clears throat> excuse me, guess it is, is like you said, probably pushing yourself too hard when your muscles reach failure. So ironically, TJ, I kind of have that same issue from from time to time. I'll get some like that pain in my bicep, <clears throat> in my biceps. And when that happens, I almost always know that I've kind of overtrained myself a little bit. I've gone a little bit too hard on the volume with my workouts or whatever. Um, so like, uh, one time last year that happened to me, uh, with my, with my, I think it was my right bicep. Um, and I was just getting a lot of that kind of like tendonitis and even kind of some, some stuff in my elbow as well. And uh, I backed off. I lightened up on, on any of the direct like bicep work and things like that. Uh, I'd lighten up on, basically I'd lighten up on whatever the exercise is that causes the pain. Like when you feel the pain, um, or right after you feel that pain, um, whatever exercise you've been doing, I'd lighten up on that some. So I'd lighten up, uh, for a week. Um, if it's still hurting, I'll uh, lighten up for two weeks and keep that keep that don't stop doing the the exercise because you want the you know if there is a little injury or a little muscle tear or whatever you want to heal that by continuing to give it a reason to kind of grow and heal uh the last thing you want to do is just not use it you know what i mean because then it doesn't really have much of a reason to kind of like heal itself so keep giving it a reason to heal by still doing the workouts um but i would i would definitely say do that um i would definitely say like kind of lighten up on that workout or whatever workouts affect it and give yourself time to heal and see if that does it. But I would definitely not recommend the stretching before it. Um, and I would uh, recommend backing off. My first guess is overtraining. So do that, uh, try that. And if that does not work and it still hurts um, after you've backed off for a while, message me or whatever and let's talk about it some more. All right, Jim says, I'm 48 years old. I understand a quick method uh, to, term to determine max heart rate is 220 minus age. That's right. Um, so my max heart rate should be 172. Um, <clears throat> working on my cardio on my MTB last night and I hit 175. Last year after several weeks, Last year, after several weeks, I could get the rate to 181. I understand that the MHR, uh, maximum heart rate, will determine your workout zones. So should I always keep my maximum heart rate to 172? Is it okay to push for a short time and get it higher than that? Um, I'll say, Jim, and you'll, you'll, you guys will probably notice a theme here that I, I take as simple of an approach as possible. Um, maximum heart rate, honestly, like, I don't even measure that unless somebody has a, some kind of, like, uh, heart condition of some sort or something like that. In that case, I'm going to, obviously we'd be very careful with it and we'd make sure that they don't exceed their maximum heart rate. Probably wouldn't even get them super close to it. Um, if you're a healthy person, um, it's okay to like get above it a little bit. Just don't, you don't, the thing about it is it's kind of, it's kind of not something that you're going to have to worry about too much anyway, because by the time you reach a maximum heart rate, like while you're doing cardio, by the time you meet, reach a maximum heart rate, you're not going to be able to sustain that for a long period of time anyway, because that's why it's maximum. And you can't really increase your maximum heart rate either. You know what I mean? So like you said, that 220 minus age is kind of like a, a, a good estimate of what your maximum heart rate is. You want to stick to that, um, and you're not really going to be able to push yourself above that for very long. So if you're doing it here and there, and you don't have any like cardiovascular or any kind of like serious health issues, especially related to your heart, um, it's a good thing to to keep kind to kind of push yourself. Um, you know, basically the big biggest benefit of that is just you're burning some extra calories. The higher you know, as you get your heart rate higher, you're burning some more calories. I usually would tell somebody to. Um, 
you know, push typically to, you know, that medium range, 80, 90% of maximum heart rate. Um, I wouldn't push it way above it super often. Um, but if you do it here and there, when you're really like going hard that day, or you're just feeling the workout, you're not, you're not going to hurt yourself. Um, nine times out of 10, uh, if that's, you know, or probably more than nine times out of 10, but if you don't have any issues or anything like that, I would not, um, I would not worry about it uh, too much here if you do it here and there. I just wouldn't push it too often. Cody, what's up, bro? Uh, best thing for losing love handles. Oh, were we supposed to ask questions uh, prior? So, no, dude, I usually uh, take questions prior just so I have something to start talking about while other people ask questions. So, uh, best thing for losing love handles. This kind of stuff is ironically a question that I've gotten uh, pretty pretty often recently is like kind of targeting like certain body parts and things like that. Um, <clears throat> honestly, the big thing for losing body fat in any part of your um your body is a cal caloric deficit it's it's more eating than it is exercise so like um you know when you're you want to work out and you want to strength train because as you do that you gain muscle and like as you gain muscle so like think about this like if you're right here and your muscles right your muscles right here and you've got fat out to here so like if you're just if you just have your your diet in check you're going to slowly lose fat as the longer you stay in a calorie deficit right you're going to slowly lose fat until it gets down to like the same muscle mass that you're at here right but if you are doing some some strength training you're you're kind of making them kind of meet in the middle so like you're as you're losing fat you're also gaining muscle so your body's going to start to look more like you want it to faster and there's a billion more reasons for wanting to do strength training but that's one big one um so i would definitely suggest uh you know incorporating strength training into it you're going to be here in a few weeks and we're going to get on some of that stuff man uh but um <clears throat> so with the with the exercise piece that's what i'd say but the biggest part of it is calories uh and there's a billion different uh ways you can go about that the way i recommend doing it is um tracking your calories for a couple of weeks so you get an idea at least a couple of weeks so you get an idea of where you are on calories i pay more attention actually to like protein carbs and fats if i'm coaching somebody i give them uh maybe not immediately but pretty shortly i give them a protein a carb and a fat goal not really that's i know the calories for that but i'm not telling them to track calories i'm just trying to get them to hit those marks um because that's going to help them to like protein is going to not only help with the muscle repair but also it's going to um help them to um like increase their fullness like their, their satiety they're not going to be as full all the t or hungry all the time um so more protein helps with that and then carbs and fat can kind of fluctuate depending on the person and how it affects them and their energy levels and all that kind of stuff i usually will start with like a high protein moderate carb relatively low fat diet um and then kind of work it out from there and kind of some people that like to do keto obviously you're going to flip the carbs and the fat and stuff like that but i suggest they still keep the protein high so dude honestly the biggest thing you can do you can't really target a certain area of your body necessarily some people unfortunately they're just going to lose body fat um more quickly in certain areas than others and for most guys um myself and you included we're going to lose uh we lose the last place we lose the body fat is usually in that midsection like stomach like lower back uh area and stuff like that so you just have to maintain a caloric deficit and that can look however you want it to um you know there's been a, a professor who did like a a study i don't recommend this but he did a study where he tracked his calories and made sure he was in a caloric deficit but he ate nothing but like doritos protein shakes and whatever else like he did protein shakes just to have some protein in there but he did like doritos twinkies and protein shakes or something for like a sustained amount of time and dropped a bunch of weight and his whole point is was i just want he just wanted to prove like it's a caloric deficit that matters for weight loss now he probably felt like absolute garbage during that time uh but he still um lost the weight um so he wasn't giving himself what he needed nutritionally but he was in a caloric deficit so that's really what matters um for weight loss but like i said the only thing you can really do to target a certain body part and like get it to where you want it to be uh, a little faster get it looking uh, more in line with what you probably want is that you uh is is doing some strength training that um you know focusing on the big lifts and then moving into um Moving in with some, uh, adding in some accessory workouts, maybe to target that area to help it progress a little more quickly. So, uh, to kind of meet in the middle, like I said, instead of having to wait until the fat gets to where the muscle is. Um, <laughs> ask this question as I was eating bangs eating. <laughs> That's also, dude, it sounds delicious. Oh, man. All right. Uh, this was a good one, I think. Hopefully, it helped. Uh, if you got you guys give me any follow up questions to the ones I answered or any extra questions, um, counting down. Anybody got anything else? Three two one happy wednesday